and that you have the Savior as, as your Lord in your life, well, you know that he'll walk beside us all the journey of the way. I'll walk beside you. appreciation tonight. Let's give them a wee round of applause. Well, it's uh, great to be with you tonight. It's great to see so many in. And it's great to be saved, isn't it? It's great to be washed in the blood, filled with the Holy Ghost, and on your way to heaven, and on your way to home. And I want to thank the brethren for asking me along to take this gospel mission here in Newton Ards. And we're on the streets there during the week, and it's wonderful to see so many here, and I met some of you, and uh, we want to thank each and every one of you uh, for taking the time to come uh, to this gospel mission. There was a little chorus that was on my heart. I wonder if we could sing it. He is my everything. He is my all. Hands up, who knows that old chorus? Yes? Well, we'll just sing without any music, because I think our sisters just made our way down. But let's sing it from your heart just before we turn to the Word of God. He is my everything, he is my all, he is my everything, both great and small. by everything now have a let's sing it again he is my everything he is my everything he is my all he is my everything both great and small he gave his life for me his life for me made everything new. He is my everything. 
Some folks may ask me. Some folks may ask me. Some folks may say, Who is this Jesus? We talk about every day. He is my Savior. He is my Savior. And He sets me free. Now listen while I tell you. Lovely. Oh, what he means to me. Once more, for the last. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both great and small. He gave his life for me. Now, great to know the Lord tonight. And the brethren have asked me, just saying this is the first night of our gospel mission, if I could just share a short word of testimony. How the Lord has saved me and transformed my family. And people often wonder if the same miracles which happened 2,000 years ago, if they can still happen again today. Well, friends, I believe that they can because you're looking at a miracle here tonight. Somebody whose life and family has been completely transformed by the message of the gospel. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? In the verse 17, just want to leave one verse of scripture with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and the verse 17. Paul writes, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Look at our verse again. Therefore, if any man, woman, young person, be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Friends, today when a man accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he gets a new life. He gets a new longing. Everything is completely new. When a man gets saved, he gets a new father. He gets a new family. And he also gets new friends. His company is changed. And his character is changed. He now has a love for God. He has a love for the Bible. A love for the prayer meetings. And even a love for his enemies. His temper. His tongue. And his temptations are changed. He's a new creation. The old life has gone. It's what the Bible calls being born again. And I can honestly say tonight. That being born again of the spirit of God. Is the greatest thing in the world. And only you know in your heart. Where you stand. Jesus said to Nicodemus. Except a man be born again. Or born from above. He cannot see. The kingdom of God. Do you know you can go to church. Every week. And never be born again. Did you know that? And as I travel the country. I meet so many men. And women and young people. And they go to their church week. After week, after week, and they're still not saved. Is that you tonight? Is that you? You go to your church every week, but you know in your heart that you're still not saved. People don't like that word today, saved. Sure they don't. We women chase after me with their sticks and their handbags. They hit me when I ask them, are they saved? The horns go up. There's two types of people in this hall tonight. Those of us that are saved and those of us that are lost. And if all of our names went on the wall in this two columns, saved and lost, which column would you be in tonight? The saved or the lost? 
As you know now, and many of you do know me, John Weir from the Donegal Road in Belfast. Some surprise just let me in the night. <laughs> Being from the Donegal Road. But from a young as a young lad, my life was very much dominated by football. Growing up in the village beside Windsor Park. And I had the privilege of joining St Andrews Boys Club when I was 11 years of age. And they were the top football youth team in Northern Ireland. And if you played for St Andrews, you had a great chance of being scouted and going to England and going to Scotland, the different teams. And at 16, I was just about the same for Chelsea. Chelsea had a wonderful player called Gianfranco Zola. He was an Italian. He was small. I am small. And I always wanted to play for Chelsea. And at 16, I was just about the same for Chelsea. And as just as I was about to sign the contract, disaster struck, I hurt my knee, and I had to come home from London, and I was absolutely gutted, as you can imagine. But I recovered from that particular injury, and I went on then to join Linfield, and I was also the captain of the Northern Ireland Youth International Team. And I was just about to break into Linfield's first team at 19, and disaster struck again. I hurt my knee in a real bad way and I had to stop playing football completely when I was 19. I felt as if my entire life had fell apart. My friends at that time, Chris Brunt and Stephen Davis, were playing in the Premiership, earning thousands of pounds and here was me at 19, unable to do the thing that I dreamed about and the thing that I loved. But you know, friends, looking back now as a Christian, I can see that God had a completely different plan for my life. And as Amy said tonight, God has a plan for your life. Listen to Jeremiah 1 and 5. God tells the prophet, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Listen to the Savior tonight. In Mark 8 and 36, he said these powerful words. For what shall it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I was chasing after the things of the world. And had no thought about my soul. Is that you tonight? You're chasing after the things of the world. And you have no thought about your soul. I meet so many men and women and young people. And they're selling their soul for the drink. They're selling their soul for the drugs. They're selling their soul for the boys in the club, the partying scene. Even last night in Sandy Row, I spent an hour with a man. Life ruined with drink. And I said, sir, you can take a drink of the living water and never thirst again. The water Jesus gives you is fresh. It's free. It's flowing. It's final. It is forever. Isn't he wonderful to me? Maybe there's a drunkard in this hall. Maybe there's a drug addict in this hall. You can leave tonight set free by the gospel. You can leave tonight set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. My Bible tells me whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I can tell you story after story after story. I've been on my knees with drug addicts, paramilitaries, drunkards, Religious people, and they get up off their knees saying, for the first time in my life, I feel clean. The Spirit answers to the blood and tells me I am born of God. What a Savior tonight. What a gospel. Friend, look at me. Do you love the Lord? Sir, today, do you love the Lord? Lady, do you love the Lord? Young person, do you love the Lord? I love him from the depths of my heart. He's a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Jeremiah 8 and 20, the prophet tells us the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. I don't know, as our, just like our sister Amy said, I don't know where I would be tonight if the Lord hadn't saved a wretch like me. I could even be in hell itself. But I can say like Paul, I am what I am, but by the grace of God. And sad to say, growing up, I had no Christian influence whatsoever. My parents were good people, but they more or less let us make our own decisions. Before I became a Christian, I was never in a Sunday school, sad to say. Didn't even own a Bible. Couldn't even have told you one Bible verse. But deep down within my heart, I still believed in God. 
When I looked at the stars at night and the birds and the trees and the wonders of creation, I knew that there had to be more. My family was a mess at this time. Things were going on within my own heart. And I remember getting on to my knees in my bedroom, saying, God, if you're real, will you help me in my life? I have nowhere to turn. E.M. Burns is a great author in prayer. He said these words, listen carefully. He said there are prayers, but then there are desperate prayers. You ever been there? There are prayers, but then there are desperate prayers. Am I speaking to somebody here tonight who's desperate? Am I speaking to a man that's desperate? Am I speaking to a woman that's desperate? Am I speaking to a young person that's desperate? Listen to Jeremiah 29, 13. God tells the prophet, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. That was me in that bedroom 14 years ago on my knees crying for mercy. And I remember a presence coming upon me in that room. And I knew that everything was going to be okay. And the way the Lord had planned it, my mother was working with a lovely Christian lady called Peggy Reardon in the Belfast City Hospital. And Peggy said to my mother, she says, June, I'm praying for your family. Peggy Reardon planted a little seed. Peggy Reardon cared for our souls. And that night I cried unto God. I knew I had to go to Peggy's church. Remember getting directions off the internet and walking in on my own. And for the first time in my life, I heard the old-fashioned message of the gospel. And the preacher that night read from Isaiah 53, but he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that night, friends, I realized that Jesus died for a wretch like me. My sin, my shame, my skeletons in the cupboard. And that was the first night I ever heard the gospel. And that was the night I was saved. Many times have you heard the gospel and you're still not saved? I believe there's people in here tonight and you know that you should be saved. But you're still not. I believe there's people in here tonight who were brought up in a good Christian home. But if I went down and asked you, are you saved? You would have to say, no. What's hell going to be like for you? What's hell going to be like for those that knew the gospel, could even preach the gospel, but never accepted Christ as their own and personal saviour? Never forget that night we sang an old Philip Bliss hymn, Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners, that was me. And I believe there's ruined sinners in here tonight. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Bearing shame and scoffing rude. In my place condemned he stood. He sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah tonight. What a saviour. And friend, I left that church 14 years ago. A new man. What did the hymn writer pen? What a wonderful change. And my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I often say it takes a man to be a Christian. Do you know that? It takes a woman to be a Christian. It takes a young person to be a Christian. To stand up in your workplace, to stand up in your school, to stand up in your university and say, you see that man on the middle cross? I love him. Anybody can drink in the bars. Anybody can go to the boogies. Anybody can live a moral. It takes a real man and a real woman and a real young person to say, I love the Lord from the depths of my heart. No secret disciples. I want to be identified with my Savior. What about you tonight? Do people know that you're saved? People know you're a Christian. Can people look at you and say there's a man of God? Can people look at you and say there's a woman of God? I want people to look at me and say, you see that wee man? He loves the Lord. See, inside that wee man is the Holy Ghost. Inside that wee man, 
There's a lava. He that believeth in me, as the scripture hath said out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. John 7 and 38. That's the cry of my heart in these last days of time. That God would raise up a generation of young men. Generation of young women. Who have laid everything on the altar. And we might serve our land. That we might serve our generation like never before. And after getting saved, I remember going to the Faith Mission bookshop in Belfast down there in Queen Street. To buy a Bible. As I didn't have a Bible. Started walking the roads and praying and fasting. And crying unto God to move in my family. And I laughed because when I first got saved, sometimes the minister had finished preaching before I found the book in the Bible he was preaching from. <laughs> Anybody been there? But you know, friends, I had this enthusiasm. I had this desire to win souls. Hard to explain. Jesus said, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And when you lead a soul to Christ, it is the greatest thing in the world. You ever led a soul to Christ? Oh, you see the joy, but you're never satisfied. You want more, and you want more, and you want more. And after I got saved, God sent me to Dublin. That was my training ground. That was my Bible school on O'Connell Street. Witnessing to the Legion of Mary, the Muslims, and the Mormons, the atheists. And if you can witness in the streets of Dublin, let me tell you, you can witness anywhere. And when you used to see me coming, they said, there's wee Paisley down from the north, the tremendous all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, friends, I could tell you story after story on O'Connell Street, on my knees with people in the pouring rain wanting to be saved. People looking at me and saying, see that wee man, he's not right in the head. <laughs> this wee man is right in the head. Because inside me is the presence of the living God. Maybe you're saying tonight, I would love to get saved. But I'll not be able to keep it. Friends, you'll never keep it. But when you call upon the name of the Lord, a miracle happens. Did you know that? The Spirit of God enters into your body. And the Lord will save you tonight. The Lord will keep you tonight. And the Lord will satisfy. Value. And four years ago, I gave up my job. I was working as a classroom assistant in a school in Newton Abbey. And I gave up my job. I just lived by faith. I said, Lord, use me to reach this land with the gospel. I will go anywhere to win souls for you. And I can tell you story after story after story, living by faith. How the Lord meets your need. I'll give you one story very quickly. I was down in Kilkeel preaching. And a wee woman got saved and I was rejoicing. And the next day, I got two punchers. <laughs> I got two punchers the next day. I often say I wish I'd got four punchers and maybe two women had got saved. <laughs> but you know a little gift came through my door with the exact amount of money to pay for the punchers. See, God's work done in God's way Never lacks God's supply. An old preacher told me this. And maybe there's a young man in here tonight and the call of God is on your life. He told me this. When God sees the sacrifice, then he sends the fire. It's not good. God sees the sacrifice, then he sends the fire. And I want to lay everything on the altar for my Savior. And wherever the Lord wants me to go, I will go to serve him. And after getting saved, I was starting then to try and reach my family. And God in his grace saved my mother. My mother's from a place called Sandy Row. You've all heard of Sandy Row. And my mother went to Sunday school. The seed was sown. And she actually made a profession when she was 10 years of age, but then lived out in the world. But when she saw the change in my life, she started to come to church with me. And 10 years ago, she got gloriously saved. And to see her now, down there in the city hospital, witnessing for the Lord truly is fantastic. And then my dad got saved. I used to leave little tracks about the house. You know the way you do to try and reach your loved ones. And there was one particular track that spoke to my dad 
about the second coming of the Lord. My dad was just like a man of the world, was just a man of the world. He worked Monday to Friday, out Friday night drinking, out Saturday night drinking. No time for the gospel. But he read this track about the second coming. Two in a field, one of the taken, one of the left. Two in a mill, one of the taken, one of the left. And do you know the lady that wrote that track here tonight? Her sister Joy Patterson down the back. And that same night my dad read that track, he had an awful dream. He thought he was in hell. And can I say tonight, I believe that if the Lord was to come tonight, that there's men here, and there's women here, and there's young people here, and you know that you would be left behind. Because you're not living right. And that was my dad. He knew he wasn't living right. He was driving the car down the Raven Hill Road one day. He was so much under conviction of sin. I was in England at the time doing a mission trip and he pulled the car into Cherryville playing fields. And do you know what he prayed? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The tears were coming down his cheeks. And I believe there's people in here tonight and you need to pray that too. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It wasn't a big, long theological prayer. But God saw his heart. And to see the change in his life truly is amazing. And then my sister got saved and Michelle was going through a tough time in her life. And she got saved around nine years ago. And she's living in Port of Oge. Anybody here today from Port of Oge? I saw a few people floating about from Port of Oge. And Michelle's down there and she's bringing up her wee family in the ways of the Lord. And then around two years ago, I took a little meeting up there in Finnegan. My two aunts were at the meeting and afterwards they said, John, we need to get saved. And I had the joy of pointing them to the Lord. Friends, tonight, an entire family transformed by the gospel. To God be all the glory. He can change your family tonight. Look at me now. He can change your family. Maybe you have a son. Maybe you have a daughter, maybe you have a husband, maybe you have a wife, maybe you have grandchildren. Keep praying for them. Maybe there's a loved one has been invited in here tonight, not saved. Oh, friend, we want you to go to heaven. Heaven won't be the same if you're not there. But friends, tonight, keep praying for your loved ones. Keep planting little seeds. I don't know where I would be tonight if that wee lady, Peggy Reardon from the Shankle Road, hadn't have planted a little seed into our family. Keep planting seeds. We're here for the week. Bring them in. I'll be out in the streets every day. I'm staying in the district. You know anybody I can go and wrap their door? My little card is down on the table at the back. I will be doing everything to bring them in from the fields of sin. Because listen, for somebody, it could be the last opportunity. Did you know that? powerful thing happened down our district a few months ago. There was a man I was burdened for him. You ever got burdened for somebody? Ask God to burden you for someone for this mission. I was burdened for a man in our district. I says, I've got to reach that man. I've got to get this man to a gospel meeting. And he was coming down the Donegal Road, but I lost him. And I went up a couple of streets and I got the hold of him and I says, Andy, you're going to have to come to a gospel meeting with me some night. He says, I'll come with you. Couldn't believe it. And I was down in Newton Arch Congregational Church giving my testimony. And I met him on the Wednesday morning just a few months ago. I says, I'll ring you on Saturday night and I'll arrange to pick you up. Two days later, I went into the local shop on the Friday morning. The girl in the shop says to me, John, did you hear who was found dead this morning? I says, who? Andy. Couldn't believe it. He was coming to church with me on the Sunday night in Newton Arch. So close, wasn't he? I saw him the Wednesday morning. He was found dead on the Friday morning, two days later. And friends, if ever, if ever that motivated me to win souls, oh boy. To think there could be people in here tonight. You could drop dead tonight. You could be buried by Thursday. Or just step between life and death. Andy was so close. And little did I know he was one of the top paramilitaries in Belfast. It's all over the papers. 
I just saw a low soul, and I tried to grab him by the feet to get him in to hear the gospel. And now he's out in eternity. All oh, friends tonight, I don't know everybody in this hall, but maybe there's somebody here and your life is a mess. Maybe there's somebody here and you're burdened about your life. Maybe there's somebody here and you would love to be saved. Maybe even at one time you used to be a Christian. Look at me. Jesus is here to change your life. This very night, your life can be changed forever. Charles Wesley penned that he breaks the power of cancelled sin. And he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. And his blood availed for me. It's the great about washing the blood. Jesus said, if you die in your sins, powerful. If you die in your sins unrepentant, where I am, powerful. Where I am, there you cannot be. See, you sense the quietness here tonight. You sense the silence here tonight. I believe that the Holy Ghost is here. And there's men, and there's women, and there's young people. And you know that you're not ready. Friend, the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I was up in the Ulster Hospital last night visiting the wee woman. As I walked through the ward, I looked at men. I looked at women. On the verge of eternity. And where are many of them going? Have you a testimony tonight? Do you know for sure that you're ready for heaven? I get so many calls to see people and they're dying. They say, son, have I done enough? I've wasted my life. Would God still take me in? Friend, I point them to the cross. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe there's even a prodigal in here tonight. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter, and at one time you were in fire for God and you loved the Savior. But now you're in the far country. I pray tonight that you will come to yourself. But God had to send the mighty famine to get his attention. God may have to send the mighty famine into your life to get your attention. Friends, I give the Lord all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for what he has done in my life and what he has done in my family. And as I finish, and you've listened wonderfully, there's a little chorus that sums up my testimony tonight. And it is this. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heart aches. And broken pieces. And ruined lives. Is there a ruined life in here tonight? A ruined life? Listen, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Heartaches and broken pieces. Isn't he a wonderful saviour? And he can take your broken life tonight. And he can give you a reason for living. Remember sharing the gospel one day in the falls road outside the behave bar. We woman said, son, I wish I'd never been born. And I said, Molly, you can be born all over again. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. What a gospel. Oh, friend, tonight, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the deep sense of your presence. We thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God is in our midst. Lord, we believe right now that there's men and women and young people, and they're so close to the kingdom. Lord, give the saving grace to me. Bring sinners to the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you are willing that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Save souls tonight. Bring home the backsliders. 
We'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're just going to finish with 115. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Thank you. There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would your evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There's a little prayer room there at the side. If I could be of any help, come and see me after the meeting or even take my little card and give me a ring. I'll even come to your home and get a drop of tea. But don't put it off. God speaking to your heart tonight. Don't put it off. I was down in the country there in Loch Gold preaching a few weeks ago. And the lady came into the wee hall, wee country mission hall. And she was so much under conviction, she said she was going to run down the aisle to get saved. And I said, Nicola, if you had run down the aisle, it wouldn't have bothered me in the slightest. We got on our knees together at the front. You'd cry under the door. But you waited until after the meeting, came to the door, and we had the joy of pointing her to the Saviour. And an old preacher again told me, the devil wants you to be saved tomorrow. Keep putting it off. Keep putting it off. And you never make that step. I trust in him. will be your night. Let's stand after the introduction and sing this old hymn from the depths of her heart. Thank you, musicians. Let's stand. separate us with your blessing we thank you for this wonderful night thank you for all the singers and the musicians here that have taken part we thank you for the short word of testimony lord i thank you for saving a wretch like me 
transforming my family. I love you tonight. And I owe you everything. And we just pray for those gathered in that are not saved, backslidden. Oh God, don't let them go into a lost eternity tonight. Give you the praise, honor, and glory for everything you've done for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, friends, and see you at home. Thank you. Thank you.